What is that? When taking a very close look and a very long look at the historic photographs of bygone lake boats, oddball stuff tends to show itself. Of course, keep in mind that many of these photos were taken in an era when there was still a mix between wooden vessels and steel vessels. Heck, some of the steel lake boats still had stuff aboard them that grew out of the wooden sailing boats. So you start to notice things that could easily be overlooked. And you have to ask yourself, what is that? What did they use it for? How did it work? Why is it there? Here's an example. The boat carrier William P. Palmer, locking downbound. But a close look shows that on her deck she's carrying this. A boiler. A bit odd, but she's transporting it somewhere for someone. Our focus here deals with a micro feature mostly seen on some lake boats that were constructed between about 1900 and 1910. Today we're going to focus our history microscope on this single appendage. It's a chain looped across the bow of a freighter. Such a chain is often seen on Great Lakes bulk carriers of the past. Yet it only shows up on some vessels and not on all oar boats, or schooners, or lumber vessels, and never on whalebacks. Plus, it is not only seen on oar boats, but also on some passenger boats, some car ferries, and some package freighters. I always thought that it had some purpose, but I didn't know what that purpose was. I also thought that it looked pretty cool. So much so that I put it on a couple of my model boats. It gave them that 1890s, early 1900s look. This one has grown ice whiskers, but I'm sure it serves a better purpose than that. Almost nothing on a Great Lakes oar boat is there for pure decoration. And this was not some sort of a necklace. It has a purpose. The more photos that you study, and the more times that you see this chain, the more clues to its use you can pick out. Look at the manner in which this one is stowed. Also notice here, that the oarboat Frank J. Hecker's chain is resting normally. But behind her, the chain of the Crescent City is pulled up in this manner. And look at the way that this one is stowed. Have you figured it out? If you said that this is a tow chain, you are correct. Often these boats had to take on a quick tug, and it was worth money to use as little time and line heaving as possible. This chain was located and permanently affixed in the best position for a tug to swing in and tie on a hawser and tow away quickly. Here we see the Peter White being towed into Cleveland. Tows such as this had to be performed quickly and easily and the chain made that happen. This tow was the steamer S.R. Kirby being guided safely past a wreck in the channel of the St. Clair River. In this case, hooking on and letting go had to be done quickly, otherwise the traffic in the river would jam. In an era when there could be as many as 40 or more passages each day, preventing a traffic jam was critical and so the time needed to attach the tow line and shortly thereafter let it go was also critical. Thus, now you know that these chains that were draped across the bow of these lake boats were not just for decoration, but they still look cool on my model boats. <laughs>